All right, so I'm gonna do uh, number five in the five C's of uh, survival. Um, I'm not really going in order. Uh, they're uh, according to um, and where I got this from is from uh, Dave Canterbury of a uh, dual survival series. Uh, when he and Cody Lundin were on the scene, they made the show. I really enjoyed that show. Um, I liked the perspective. I liked what the producers did as far as uh, pitting uh, two different survival mindsets uh, uh, against each other to solve certain situations and supposed survival situations. At any rate, um, five C's uh, would be uh, cover, combustion, carry, cutting, cordage. And there's going to be some addendums to that um, that I'm kind of adding on my own. I think I think it's out in the ether that there are some other additional. I think there's like three more. Um, but for now, I'm just going to focus on the original ones. Again, that's going to be uh, uh, something to cover yourself with, uh, something to make fire with, combustion, uh, something to carry something with, uh, things that you harvest, uh, for example, like water or something like that, um, a cutting tool like a knife or blade or something like that, and then um, cordage and cordage is um, basically rope or string something to tie or bind with uh, and in the there's a sacred order uh, in survival uh, and what I learned uh, as a uh, tracker school student was that um, there are three elements to the sacred order of survival and that is um, shelter, fire, and water. Uh, and those are the three uh, primary ones that a human being needs to survive. Many people will say, we'll talk about, uh, well, what about food? Yeah, we can last pretty long um, without food. Food is essential, and many p different schools of thought will include, uh, include that as a fourth element. Uh, and then even jokingly, because of the utility and the varying uses and the endless uses that you can you can use with a piece of string or rope or cordage. Uh, oftentimes, uh, they'll replace replace food uh, with cordage, or they'll add it on. So it'll be shelter, fire, water, food, and cordage, or shelter, fire, water, cordage. Uh, and I, I kind of almost concur with that that thought. Although I do, I, I am I, I am a stickler for the primary three: shelter, fire, water, and the sacred order. Um, but cordage is uh, very. Uh, very important tool and uh, it's important to know how to manipulate it uh, which is another aspect of it and so what I have here is I've kind of two sides I've separated some things out for the most part I have uh, some primitive cordage uh, and we'll talk about that first and then there's the more uh, modern uh, cordage or rope or twine that sort of thing and so um, what I have here is I have some some raw examples and in previous videos that I have. Uh, I've, I've used uh, velvet leaf as a plant that provides uh, cordage, fibers for cordage, uh, dog bane as well. Uh, the inner bark of many trees like basswood and uh, slippery elm work pretty well. Uh, and even um, in some areas where yucca or yucca grows, uh, that's a good source for fibers or cordage. Uh, from from a natural standpoint, um, there's many different different plants that are out there that will provide um, serviceable fibers to make cordage or will serve as a lashing uh, in a in a in a in a pinch. Um, in my region, dogbane uh, is very very strong natural fibers. Uh, and again, you know, look up my videos for that dogbane. Uh, and milkweed is another. The inner bark of basswood is another. Um, slippery elm, like I mentioned, uh, the inner bark of that uh, is is another. Um, and those are just right off the top of my head. There's a whole list of different plants that provide uh, cordage. I'll try to dig that up and, and, and post a link to that um, if I can find it. I, I, I think I know where it is. Um, uh, but and, and nettles, nettles definitely. Uh, stinging nettles uh, provide really, really good cordage uh, as, as a, as a ubiquitous plant at least in my region and depending on where you are at uh, there will be the same or similar or differing plants that grow that will provide uh, natural fibers to make cordage from and so what I have here 
is I actually have some uh, these are fibers from let's see here I'm just gonna yeah these are these are dog bane fibers and I think I, I did grab the right bag that are showing them I didn't have any raw stocks um, available right now but this is dog bane fibers at different stages of um, processing so like these this fibers here are right off of the plant and it's a very 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 strong fibers um, you, you, they're, they're strong enough for both strings uh, and 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 for making uh, the bow drill strings and they're very they look they have a look-alike uh, like such as milkweed um, but once you really get to know those two plants then they're hard to misidentify at a younger stage they do look alike uh, and and the only thing that uh, dogbane it may have some medicinal uses but it is toxic to eat um, whereas um, milkweed, uh, it, if it's prepared properly, and it really isn't that big of a deal, you just boil it. Um, uh, it's 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 quite edible and it's tasty, um, especially at its younger stages. And that's they look alike, and so that's why it can be kind of dangerous when they're younger. As they get older, it's easy to differentiate. I have another video on that as well, if you if you're interested. Uh, at any rate, um, this is the, the 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 raw fibers right off of the stalk. Uh, you harvest a uh, dog bane uh, and 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 uh, milk and or milkweed uh, and even um, well dog bane and milkweed you can harvest in the uh, uh, the fall throughout the winter um, in the spring the older stocks you won't do that because the weather is beating them up and the fibers are kind of brittle uh, stinging nettle you can harvest that midsummer towards the end of the summer and they're they're really tall at that point and uh, they provide a lot of a lot of the, the whole stock provides a lot of uh, fibers for you. Um, this is dog bane fibers that I've actually combed out. Um, I took some some dog brushing, uh, some dog brushes, and basically carded them as if that's a that's a that's a, um, a, a a knitting or a yarn making or a spinning term is where you take your fibers and with your combs you you kind of you 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 basically brush out the fibers. And you brush it you from the shaft or the the bark, and so you get this nice cottony uh, type fibers that you can then uh, manipulate and uh, spin this into actual string um, or you know or, or rope or yarn. So these are the natural raw fibers like this. This also would make a good tinder bundle. This would too. Uh, and then using reverse twisting methods from this type of uh, stage of the fiber you can actually get some pretty strong and serviceable cordage like this and this is reverse twist twisted um, and I've got videos on that um, and this is what it looks like it kind of looks like regular kind of rope almost right and this by twisting it you 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 strengthen the fibers when you twist it and uh, and then this is this is I hope you can hear that. This is really strong natural fibers, and this is just you just this completely made this off the land. Uh, if the stalks are right, I can uh, harvest the stalk, strip the fibers, and twist cordage all within five to ten minutes, and I can have serviceable cordage like this, really quick and dirty, real quick and easy, um, in, a, in a real tight situation. Um, let's see, from a natural standpoint, what do I want to what I want to show next? I'm gonna put this kind of back in the bag a little bit because it's kind of gets in the way um, you know using uh, natural cordage I can um, I can make a um, I can make uh, this kind of fishing gear and this is made of dog bane and this is a uh, this is a piece of bamboo I got from a local uh, Asian market and um, I'm using this as kind of my reel and then here I have a piece of corn cob as a float that I've just bored out and ran my cordage through. And then I've uh, twisted this and at the very end um, I've just attached a thinner piece of uh, dog mane that's twisted. And then at the very end is a gorge hook. Gorge hooks work if the size is right uh, for the fish that you're after. Gorge hooks very, will work very well for fishing. Um, and catching fish. Um, so this is kind of my 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 very primitive you know rod and reel, if you will. Um, this kind of a, a, a 
of fishing just a drop line for, for drop line fishing so uh, that's what that's one of the many uses of cordage natural fibers that I could use and this is an example of, of a primitive use of that and I've got a few more that I'll share as well just to kind of give you some ideas right um, uh, cordage is the the basis uh, for making um, fabric right so this here this is store-bought jute fibers and you can just basically twine and go to pretty much any hardware store or hobby shop or whatever and buy you know little spools of this and this is finger woven and this is finger weaving and so just by finger weaving this um, I've made the strap that's really strong um, and it's natural fiber I didn't harvest those fibers I bought them from the store like two or three bucks um, but I've been able to make this strap and I haven't you know I haven't you know it's just one of those projects that you do when you've got some time on your hands you're watching TV or listening to an audio, audio book or whatever uh, riding the bus or whatever um, you can just whip this out and just kind of create a project and once you get in the flow you can almost do this without looking or it becomes very relaxing or meditative if you will um, but using cordage I can then make fibers right so uh, now binding and knitting are examples of that using uh, spun usually spun fibers uh, from from wool uh, and uh, other plant materials and by the way I forgot to mention that uh, uh, sinew from deer elk antelope bison that sort of thing so those sorts of animals bovine animals is the nat the strongest natural cordage that you can create you know you drew you, you you harvest the sinew from the animal animal and that's usually the Achilles tendon of the hind legs uh, this could be some in the forelegs but the bigger thicker stronger ones are there and then the back strap uh, underneath uh, the loin or the back of the animal uh, is where you get your long long strips of uh, sinew and that's very once you 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 you, you process that um, pound it out and then twist it into cordage it's very very strong um, the thing is is that uh, sinew tends to be water soluble so if you get it wet it gets floppy again um, but it has its own natural glue so once it dries it's, and you twist it it's, it's going to stay um, but you have to get that type of animal like I said deer, antelope, bison, elk, um, water buffalo you know you, you get the idea um, that kind of tendon is what makes sinew after that is dog bane, at least in my region, as, as far as a, a strongest natural fiber. So number one, natural fiber wise is, is sinew. Number two is, is dog bane or uh, applicinum cannabinum, I believe is the Latin term for uh, uh, dog bane. So anyways, back to the uses of cordage. Using cordage, you can weave and or knit uh, or uh, now bind. Uh, which is basically needle knitting. It's a one needle with a hole in it, and it's the it's it predates um, knitting, as a matter of fact. And uh, you can make all kinds of items with it. And I think it, I think that what they say is it's uh, about six thousand plus years BC that they have remnants of cloth or material that has been now binded. So it predates uh, knitting. Um, here, using um, I think synthetic cordage. I knitted my uh, daughter uh, just a kind of a little kind of a little hand towel or something like this and obviously you can see it's pink but you can see the fibers that's what knitting does and knitting as opposed to now binding you're using two uh, sticks your chopsticks will work or whatever but um, they're two sticks and you're basically chaining or looping together uh, cordage links of cordage to create a mesh which then creates your fibers um, so you know those kind of skill sets again you know people that are in survival and prepping and stuff like that um knitting and now binding and finger weaving it all seems very how we say unmanly or very you know femi if you will uh there's 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 there, there's a huge sense and ability of empowerment to be able to take some raw fibers like i showed you uh and to weave and knit your own gloves your own uh schmog uh, as this, I think that's how it's pronounced, like, or your head wrap or a scarf, a uh, pair of socks, um, any sort of covering. So, um, it, it, yeah, it's, it, it's extremely manly to be able to be self-sufficient and make your own crap, right? So, I, I, I you know, it, it's, it's very romanticized for 
uh, survival types, big manly survival types want to, you know, learn how to make bows and arrows and, and things like that and, 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 and forge knives and things because they're going to jump out of the tree onto the back of a deer and kill it uh, with, their, with their bare hands. Okay, that's cool in the gang, but um, if, you can't, if you cannot harvest the plants that you need and, um, and uh, manipulate those fibers into strong enough cordage to A, make a bowstring and or B, make a string strong enough to make a bow drill so you can make a fire so you can at least easily eat and digest whatever you killed with your bare teeth. Um, it, it doesn't really make a difference, right? So, you know, there's nothing wrong with being able to know how to knit or now bind. So, you know, I just want to throw that out there for those people that, are, you know, have those kind of misconceptions. So, that's my soapbox for now. Anyways, um, what else do I have here? Um, let's see, I have another piece that I started and I just kind of get some knots of, of finger weaving. And again, I've got videos on how to do that. I'm not the best finger weaver. What I'm after is to be able to do the basics. Now there's people that are artists in this and there's plenty of videos out there. If this interests you, please, I implore you to go check them out. Um, uh, I, I just I just really uh, scratched the surface of this, but they're beautiful. Uh, the voyageurs, uh, the French voyageurs have these, 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 these coats and they're, they're sashes that are finger woven and they're very, very pretty and ornate. And that's, you know, I'd, I'd like to get to that level one day. Um, but there's just so much other stuff to cover. So uh, I really try to be just a, a generalist, uh, at least a bare minimum of certain skill sets. Uh, but if this is something that you're really into or you, you find real value in it, please, by all means, go research it. And you'll find a plethora of material nowadays that we are in the information age and the age of Google. Um, you'll find all kinds of information on how to really finger weave and to knit and to now bind. Um, let's see here. What else we got here? I've got some natural cordage here. Uh, I have basically whipped this uh, into um, just kind of a loop or an easy way to carry this. And I will kind of show, and I'll, I'll just show a couple of basic knots. I'm not really, this is not a knot video. Um, but uh, uh, just to give you an idea, it's important to know how to manipulate your, your, your fibers or your cordage. And this was two pieces. Um, and I will do this in one piece actually. So this is just a length of, um, oh, it's two lengths. That's so long ago. Anyways, um, it's a length of, of, uh, of dog bane. You know, I've been working a lot with dog bane. And, uh, really I can kind of take this and I just go in and out of my fingers, my, my, between my little finger and my thumb, like this, right? And, then I can take uh, another piece, which is what I'll do, and and just kind of loop these together. Loop this is not very long. I didn't realize these pieces were that short. I thought this was one continuous piece. At any rate, what I'll do is I'll do some whipping. And uh, all I need to do is make a bite, That's some knot terminology, which is just the bend. And I'm going to lay this up against her. And I'm going to make sure I'm manipulating the right loop. All right. And then I'm just going to uh, wrap around this bundle until I find that, until I get to that loop that I've singled out. And then I'm going to take this end here and feed it through the loop and then find the end of the loop and it's in my bundle here and if I pull on it I know I've got it and then all I have to do is pull it and then I don't pull it all the way through but that'll keep it all locked and neat all right again I've got a video on how to do whipping as well so I won't really waste a lot of time on on this sorts of things just for this video it's just a kind of overview of cordage um, what else I got? So 